Welcome back everyone. As most of you know, macOS Monterey has officially came out today or it's going to be coming out very soon. And macOS Monterey for some reason was randomly installed on a 2015 MacBook Air that you know we have. And surprisingly, this software doesn't really run too bad on this specific device, which I'm actually pretty surprised about. Now, this is the oldest supported MacBook that is supported with macOS Monterey. This is the 2015 MacBook Air, which is very surprising because I could have sworn the 2014 MacBook Air could have easily supported this version of software too, but it's totally okay. Apple was still selling this thing only a few years ago, brand new. So it's totally understandable that they're still supporting the software. But here's something I really want to tell you guys, you know, macOS Monterey, Monterey is still, I mean, it's in its infancy. Although one person may have a very stable experience with it, the next person may not, even on these new MacBooks that are coming out, the 14 inch and 16 inch ones. So what I will tell you is, is that without a doubt, I would highly recommend not installing macOS Monterey on any version of MacBooks that you have. Even if you have the M1 MacBook Pros, right? If your MacBook did not come pre-installed with macOS Monterey, you are almost guaranteed to be in a better situation if you just don't install macOS OS Monterey on your device. So please keep that in mind. I'd recommend installing it maybe at least a couple of weeks when it came out. Every single year, Mac OS has so many issues, so you're better off not installing it. Now with that you know, public service announcement out of the way, what I can tell you is, is that this specific software came with a couple of cool features, but nothing groundbreaking, you know? Mac OS Big Sur was that massive, you know, update that came out. And with the 2015 MacBook Air, the few awesome features that were supposed to come out with Mac OS Monterey aren't even supported on this MacBook. So that's kind of a letdown. And the main thing that I'm talking about is that universal mode, essentially having the ability of using a iMac and an iPad essentially just kind of side by side with each other. And it's crazy. So essentially you can drag one thing from one MacBook to the other, and even an iMac you can throw in there too. And it's almost like dual screen mode you know of course there's going to be some latency here and there but it was a really cool feature and i was actually really excited about it but that is only supported on a handful of macbooks and imacs and those are like the top top tier ones unfortunately with the 2015 macbook air that is not the case now installing this you know, obviously i think it took a long time i wasn't there when it installed because it randomly installed but it's still perfectly fine you know it's totally okay but another big thing is actually the performance. So with this MacBook Air, I'm sure most of you know, this was not a great performing device. I mean, it had a lot of issues here and there, and it just really wasn't a great performing device when it came out. Now with something like a 2017 MacBook Air or the next Retina MacBook Air that came out, that was a little bit of a different story. It still isn't amazing, but that new M1 MacBook Air has amazing performance. So with something like the 2015 MacBook Air, because it still had those older chipsets, and even at that time it was fairly underpowered, you're kind of stuck in this little limbo phase where it's getting the latest software that's supported on the you know heaviest performing MacBooks like the M1 devices, but it's a fairly slow performing MacBook. You know, surprisingly, it handled this software fairly good, which I'm more surprised about than anything. Clicking on applications and opening up those things, going to the Mac App Store, things like that. I'm actually pretty surprised how well of a performing MacBook this thing still is. Now, of course, compared to my M1 MacBook, it's definitely not as fast, but the biggest thing with the performance side is just how smooth this device is still performing. So I'm pretty surprised about it. Again, I don't think it's going to necessarily, you know, surprise anybody super crazy, but for this software, running on the oldest MacBook Air, it's actually pretty surprising in my opinion. Now on top of this, another big thing with the battery life, I haven't really used this MacBook a whole lot for me to have like a justified battery life, like this is the best performing MacBook on battery life, whatever. But I do wanna say these MacBook Airs have some of the best battery lives of all time. Now definitely not compared to the M1 MacBooks and nothing compared to even probably the MacBooks before that, but historically, even around 2015, one of the biggest features of the MacBooks were the battery life, you know, especially for the MacBook Airs. And right now I will probably Probably tell you the battery life isn't going to be as great as maybe it once was. Like I mentioned, whenever you install a latest version of software on the oldest device that's supported, it's never really an awesome experience in the beginning with, but towards the end of its life cycle, that's when it starts kind of cleaning up a little bit. And with iOS 15, even with iOS 14, the first couple versions of software weren't that great even on the newest devices. Even if you go onto the Mac subreddit, you may actually see a lot of people complaining about how their M1 MacBooks haven't been performing too well on macOS Monterey. And that's not, you know, a, a unique feature. You know, that happens every single year. I'm sure even on like the most expensive Mac Pro, if somebody wanted to install Monterey on it right now, I'm sure there would be some, you know, problems with it. So again, it's just a problem with the software. I don't think there's a problem with the MacBook. The software wasn't really even overheating on the MacBook either. And since we're kind of almost at the official release, 
release by the time this video comes out, it's pretty surprising how this MacBook is still running on this software. Again, I don't think it's perfect, and I think there's a lot of issues with it, but I am pretty surprised how good of a performing MacBook this thing still is, even in this day and age. So, in terms of that, that pretty much covers up a quick little review of the 2015 MacBook Air, aka the oldest supported MacBook Air, on the newest macOS software. So, if you guys have any other questions or anything like that, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, so then.